something that you learn in graduate school for music signal processing is there's a certain way you tend to process music on the front end and a certain way you tend to process speech. The two are handled pretty differently. Um, and so when I got to my job and I, they said, your task is to make this music transcriber better so that our singing search will work better. I said, okay, let's see what we got. What's the system? And uh, I looked at the front end and I said, hey, this is a speech front end. Uh, I think we should change it so that we can follow best practices and make this thing work a lot better. And um, my manager listened to me carefully, understood the problem and said, no, y you cannot do that. <laughs> um, and and uh, I said, well, of course you have to do it. I've got all this research. Like I've got all these papers, everybody knows. And he's like, no. And the reason is uh, that we have all these other domino effects that if we change that, it's gonna have to change a bunch of other stuff. And of course in a startup, it's all about execution. It's all about working quickly. So we weren't gonna do that. So um, I said, okay, I'm gonna have to work around this. And so then I began the multi-week long process of working around using the wrong front end for music. The takeaway from that story is that there's a lot of practical problems that need to be solved. Just like when you make a piece of code, um, maybe the three lines of it are the really interesting algorithm and the other 80, 90% of it is overhead that is just there because it's, it's there to make everything work. Uh, that also applies um, in my startup experience. To say that I was fearful uh, at my inability to make this system better that I thought was using the wrong front end, to say I was fearful would be quite an understatement. Um, I was deeply cognizant of the fact that I was being paid basically negative dollars as a graduate student at Stanford, and I was be paying, being paid positive dollars and a lot more of them um, to be a research engineer at a VC-backed company. And I was like, whoever is paying for this, I guess there's some VCs paying me, oh my gosh, like th they're gonna be freaking out. I've given them basically nothing over weeks. Like, and I, and I think the exact phrase I said to my boss in this meeting after this was, um, are you still gonna have work for me? And, and he, uh, he looked at me kind of confused and he said, are you worried about job security? And I was like, well, yeah, how much longer can I go on giving you nothing, <laughs> right? Because in, you know, this like somebody's paying me more than they were paying RAs and TAs at Stanford. Like, this can't be sustainable. And he's like, he's like, look, <laughs> that's not how this works. It's very hard to hire good people, which I realized when it was my job to hire good people. Um, and we are going to solve this problem. It might take a little more time, but people are very hard to come by, and these problems are hard to solve. We're going to do it. Um, and, and needless to say, well, I guess not needless to say, needful to say, uh, we did figure out a way to um, make this front end a lot better. Uh, and, uh, and yes, I continued working there for, for six years, so everything worked out.